I'm going to talk about some work that largely a student has been doing. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough to work with, with Jenny on this project along with uh, Andrea Morales and Durandal. And the idea around this, this project, which we started a while back, is Food is increasingly being uh, imbued with, with morality. We see that, if we would see that, if I could get the clicker right. Ah, there we go. Um, so there's been kind of increasing amounts of public discourse on understanding or deciding kind of what food is good and bad. And I'll, I'll define those terms in a little bit. But certainly factory farming, large or unhealthy portion sizes, uh, you know, food coming from the other side of the planet or locally. Uh, for some consumers, at least, the, these are moral um, and ethical questions. And you know, sort of the popularity of some of this stuff in the media suggests that kind of consumers have at least some amount of increasing salience uh, to these topics. Uh, this is sort of a brief shot of the proliferation of the kind of cottage industry that's evolved around ethical labeling, right? So this, not, not all these are foods, but Certainly, the food is certified humane. Okay, the animals have been treated in some sort of fashion that's um, morally better than they, they may have otherwise been treated. The food is ethical, organic, something like this. And consumers are often willing to pay a premium to have a product that has some sort of, uh, of label that suggests that it's been made in an ethical uh, way or more so than, than others. I think we all have ideas about what kind of good and bad food is. Um, there's not universal agreement about this, but we, we've done this. We sort of ask samples of, of people, you know, what, what, what food is moral, what food is immoral. Uh, lots of dimensions pop up, perhaps not surprisingly, you know, food that is healthy, organic, locally sourced, unprocessed, um, plant-based, sort of Meat eaters are routinely seen as less moral, at least in the eyes of some, uh, than vegetarians. And, and kind of conversely, not surprisingly, we, you see you know, sort of bad or immoral food, at least relative to the top. And again, there's, there's, there's a fair bit of heterogeneity here. Um, but you see that some foods are, are sort of imbued with morality and others, to a degree, you know, less so. Again, at least in the eyes of some. These kind of good and bad or moral and immoral decisions are important because lots of research suggests that we as consumers make these decisions about what to buy in a number of domains to either signal something about ourselves to others or signal to the self that we share, we, we carry some sort of characteristic. We have beliefs about who should be eating these foods. Let me give you an example. Holding food constant is the dawn just as ethical as this person on, on social assistance in some way. Okay. So the signaling research would suggest, you know, yes, I mean, if, if, if this person is purchasing eco-friendly products, others should infer that this person is, is moral and ethical. Um, and it's sort of agnostic to who that other person is. I'm going to show that who that other person is matters kind of in a big, in a big way. Uh, so, do we ascribe morality differently based on food choice? In other words, is, is food actually a moral decision? Do consumers view others as moral and immoral based solely on the foods they choose? Following that, do these beliefs or ascriptions of morality change as a function of who that target is? First study, I'm going to manipulate. I'm just going to literally use the grocery list paradigm. I'll let you see that in a second. I'm going to manipulate whether or not the person is making organic food choices. I'm also going to manipulate who that person is. Specifically, I'm going to do that through their income. Um, and then they see a shopping list containing eight items. So this is participants evaluating a target. The target is making these food choices. What's interesting is Norbert Schwartz has some neat work recently. I, I'm going to control for how healthy the food is, seems. Healthy is one of those dimensions that pops on morality. But if I ask you. What is more healthy, an organic cookie or a regular cookie? Um, consumers will say the organic cookie is more healthy. If I ask you how many calories the organic spinach has versus the regular spinach, you'll get lower calorie estimates for the organic spinach, even though, of course, we know that it's not possible. 
Um, so I, I'm going to control for it. It's not necessary, but I think it, it does suck up a fair bit of variance because I am manipulating health a little bit when I when I look at it. This is the basic shopping list paradigm. The person is you know, on welfare, earns 25k a year. Um, for our students, that's not seen as um, incredibly low, believe it or not. Um, or 85, uh, we pre-tested these amounts, at least at Michigan. Um, here's the list, so there's, on this particular variation, we've got kind of no, there's no frozen chicken wings. Um, it's all, it's all kind of base ingredients. We change that a, a bit later. And the manipulation is here, sort of three of the eight items are either, all we do is swap out that word organic or not. And it's not all the eight items, it's kind of a little more subtle than that. Um, so, how moral is the target? If they're wealthy, more moral if they purchase the organic food. Again, it's only th three, of, three of those eight items. It's enough to get a you know, pretty substantial difference. Uh, 25K, it's basically flat. Poor people, huge drop. Okay, so I don't think signaling can explain this story, but I mean, that, the bottom drop is, I think, what the, the most interesting thing for us. And so we decided to push this a little further. Why are we basically getting you know, poor people purchasing organic food? No, they're very immoral by the scale items we've measured. Uh, I talked about how in the first study we had organic and that manipulates to some degree healthy as well. So in this study, we're going to actually manipulate health um, directly rather than control for it. So. Organic or not, income, we're just going to use that high and low level this time, and whether or not the food is healthy or not. Uh, here's the same paradigm, and the healthy manipulation you're going to see here, extra lean, 3% beef, whole wheat bread, skim milk cheese becomes 30% fat beef, um, white bread, and whole milk cheese. And so these, again, this, um, that's the paradigm. We do replicate the first pattern. This is less interesting. What is interesting, I think, is, is here. So here's the wealthy people. They're more moral, not surprisingly, if they purchase healthy than unhealthy. Um, they're also more moral if they're purchasing organic food versus not. So two main effects here, not, not particularly surprising. Um, wealthy people kind of give us some open-ended comments here. OK, so basically, this person is, is, is good in some way. They have a clear understanding of what they buy. Everything on this list is organic or healthy. And th this person, um, interesting, here's a, the signaling, right? How they appear to others is important. Um, those on welfare, so again, we replicate that the big drop down here, the, they're much less moral if they purchase organic food than non-organic food. This red line is a little bit perplexing. It's not significantly, but it is upward sloping. Um, so if the food is unhealthy, it, it's flat. Okay, if they buy organic, um, so they, they might be able to have kind of, you can either have organic food or healthy food, but you start buying organic real healthy food, now you're just bad. Um, that's at least what this data speaks to here. Uh, if I look at some of the open-ended stuff, if they don't have their priorities straight, right? This person may be cheating the system, um, or they're just not that bright, right? They're they're making these purchases and just don't realize that they could be buying stuff that's that's cheaper. It's really sad data, isn't it? It's not. It's not. I have a little bit of uplifting stuff later. Um, can price repair this? So again, uh, price is part of it. Um, there's a perception that they're, they're just paying more. What if we manipulated the price directly? So we do that. We give basically everyone sees organic food. We manipulate whether that's on sale or not. So we give them prices, and then we you know, chop those prices by 30%. That's the average, um, average maximum Whole Foods discount um, that our subjects are used to seeing. So it helps. Okay, it helps the, the, the welfare people. It makes no difference whatsoever to, to the, um, those who have, have a reasonably high income. Um, I, I don't love this data because what if we just put the, what if we just put conventional food on sale? I worry that they're just anchoring on sale 
and they're, they're seen as more moral because they were just purchasing stuff on sale. It has nothing to do with the fact it's organic. Um, but that's one thing we're working on. Um, what else can redeem low-income individuals? What if they're, say, buying for their children, like, like, like Tim? Um, but it's for my kids. So they see a grocery list. Uh, family consists of two children and two adults. Now we've made the family bigger, so we use, this is also run in Arizona, so we calibrated the, the average income here um, to go upward, because it's now four people in the family. Um, and then the food is either for children or not. I'll show you how we do that. They either see rice cereal or infant rice cereal, uh, children's crackers or crackers, uh, yogurt or kids' yogurt. Basically, that's the, that's the procedure. And there's some good news here. There's some good news. Okay. There's, there's still that persistent main effect that the poor are less moral than the rich. But if they're buying for their children, it's better than if they're not. But this holds for both the rich and the poor. So basically, people on welfare buying for their kids are just as moral, at least, as rich people not buying for their kids. There's, there's some redemption. I don't know. Um, we re-ran this study. Uh, one thing that, 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 that kind of came up in our discussion was we, everyone was told they have kids in that last design. So maybe families with kids are just seen more moral. We've, if, you're, if you see the grocery list, the, you know they have kids and there's no items for kids on there, you're like, okay, maybe they're just not good parents. They only buy their own kids some food. Uh, so we re-ran this. Uh, we tell them it's a family this time rather than a family and explicitly mention they have kids. Same paradigm. We replicate it again completely. Um, this is my favorite part of, the, um, of this research. You know, does this stuff matter? Uh, I mean, I think it, it, it matters in several ways, but this is... Um, this is, this is, I think, particularly uh, salient and important for, say, charities or nonprofits who are looking to find ways to solicit donations and help for their, their, their causes. Um, this study, we had participants have an opportunity to make actual charitable donations. So slightly different paradigm here. They came into the lab. They did a whole bunch of unrelated studies. They were paid 12 bucks for their time, but well, 45, 50 minutes or something like that. They got paid in cash up front. Uh, at the end of the study, they're basically shown a, a, a package for, for this Helping Hands. Helping Hands, a fictitious charity we made up. But we made a nice little page saying, you know, this time of year, Food banks have a lot of trouble soliciting donations, which is true, by the way. Um, and right after Easter, things don't go well. And right before Christmas, things really go well. And they hit a big slump in the summer. So basically, they're, they're trying to solicit donations. We are, are, are doing some work to, with this charity to help them uh, see if we can get them some additional money. Feel free to donate. It's completely anonymous. There's no way the researchers could tell um, whether or not people were giving money. They were paid their $12 in sort of bills that they could create any combination of 12. So a five and seven ones. Uh, so, and then we just had little envelopes floating around um, and we wanted to see if people gave any money to this charity. Uh, we also had them rate the charity itself. You know, says, what do you think of this charity? Ask a bunch of different kind of questions about the charity to help them improve their brand image or something like that. Um, the charity itself, all we did was say, there's a, a part of the page said, each dollar you donate will be used to purchase items like, and then we just put organic in there or, or not. And so that's the, the only manipulation. And we're interested in you know, money given and what they think of the charity itself. Here's money given. It's about 60% lower if they're, if they're giving organic food to poor people. Um, perceptions of the charity also significantly lower. The charity is less good, less favorable. Um, and that mediates. So the favorability of the charity itself leads to less donations. Um, ending on a high note, 
this is uh, this is an actual quote from someone in the organic condition. They had a little at the end. There's like an open response. They can write anything. Most people write nothing. Somebody was really interested in writing. All the emphasis is original. The only thing I changed in here was putting two stars through the F-bomb at the end. Um, at the beginning of the test, I thought I was going to donate all $12, but when I saw they were buying organic food, I decided on a much lower number. These people need food, yet this program is going to buy expensive organic food for people who probably don't even care. Think of how much more food they could donate if they didn't waste it on organic food. Only someone spoiled and selfish would think this is a good idea. No one I know on welfare would be grateful for organic food. They just need food. I'm sure this person knows lots of people on welfare, by the way. Um, F-bomb. I'm not donating anything to this group. I'll give to a cause that will actually put it to good use. This is way small donors. Um, that's about all I've got. Um, Food, again, imbued with morality. This transfers clearly to consumers. It also transfers to the firm itself. So the firm, per, in the last study, um, offering um, service to those who are low income, but doing so in, in, in a more moral fashion, uh, seen as less favorable. What's interesting is consumers are evaluating each other on a sliding scale that depends on the target's income. So it's not you're more moral or less moral if you choose these foods, as other research has suggested. It really depends who that other person is. Um, and this, this likely has real consequences, um, at least to the extent that our study five results are showing um, you know, real, real donations. Um, 